Hey folks, my name's Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying an awesome little pattern called the Harry Mary. It's a salmon wet fly that we use commonly here in the Maritimes. Very similar to a blue charm with some subtle differences, but sometimes that brown wing makes all the difference. So without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, today we are going to tie our Harry Mary. Um, in a little bit of a smaller version, one that I really like to fish, which is a number 12 and on one of the best hooks ever, which is a Partridge uh, Patriot hook. Um, I actually only um, started using this hook recently. I didn't even realize for some reason that the number 12 existed in a Partridge Patriot. So um, you can imagine I was pretty stoked. I fish a lot of wet flies, or not wet flies, I do fish a lot of wet flies, but I fish a lot of um, smaller flies, especially when the water levels go down. Uh, do, do, do. So our first material we're gonna use today is a gold um, oval and an extra small, obviously, because this fly is gonna be super small. Where there's no butt on this fly, we'll go up a little bit. So the Harry Mary, um, I was always kind of a believer that it was close enough to a blue charm that it probably didn't make a difference to use it or not. Um, I was wrong. I'm not afraid to admit it. I've had a couple days now where uh, this pattern was actually an absolute lifesaver. Uh, for some reason the fish just really dug the, the wing material, material I would say because the rest of it is pretty similar to um, a blue charm. Uh, our next material we're going to use is a uh, golden pheasant for the tail. And I'm just going to try to pick out a good feather for this size fly. Oh, yeah, that'll be nice. So I just kind of take the tips of this and I preen the other feather, pull the other feathers back. Um, I'm really only looking for the fibers that go right to the tip. Sorry guys, I gotta tip my vise for this. So I'm just pinching it where I want it and then I'm tying it in. my thread up now and all right now now I could do one of two things here this is a really small fly so I can use my thread to get a little bit more bulk on the body or I can come in and put in some uh, stretch which I think I'm gonna do I'm going to try to do it without having to cut my thread in doing it. It's going to take a little bit more time, but that's all right. You can just fast forward it if you don't want to watch it. And for this wrap here, I'm just going to hold on to everything and make sure nothing shifts as I wrap. Not too badly anyway. I find with these smaller flies, I almost need to sit down and tie a couple dozen before I start getting used to tying them again. Especially if I've been working on other stuff. But God, I love this hook in a number 12. Oh, And the... Um, the hook is actually pretty strong for a number 12, I must say. It's another thing to get a look out for with number 12 hooks is a lot of them can be pretty uh, fragile, easily bent. 
I just got to see how that. Oh, that's not too bad. Just going to wrap a little bit of thread there. And I'm going to bring my rib up. How bad does that look on your side? It'll do. All right, so our next step, we need to put a throat on this guy. Uh, today we're gonna use some blue uh, hen saddle. That's what I like to use on wet flies. Um, I think you can probably uh, use, it probably actually the pattern calls for, I think is either hen neck or rooster. Um, but I do like that webbier stuff the throat. And sorry guys, I do have to tip it towards me. go it's not going to be a big throat obviously and I'm just going to turn this over and try to clip this off Ooh, I clipped a little bit of my throat too bugger and when I turned my uh, hook my thread had wrapped over the throat I said geez that uh, really compressed down there. Sorry guys, I'm just having a look at it. Um, okay, so for our next material, we're gonna be using um, red squirrel tail. Now this stuff can be a little bit tricky at times. I find that uh, less is more. And it's also fairly slippery, so it helps to definitely have like a crazy glue or a super glue to help out with that just to lock it in there. You can split the wing too, which I might do as well. We'll see how this goes. And I'm just measuring it up where I want it. I'm gonna give my thread a little bit of a spin there so it doesn't lay as flat. I don't think I'm gonna split this wing. I think I'm just asking for trouble right now if I do that. That'll work quite nice, actually. So I'm going to leave a little bit of the uh, cut end exposed because I want to come in now and use um, some super glue. This is a LePage Ultra Gel. Lays on a little bit thick, but we can also uh, just put a tiny bit on and then push it down into the fibers. So we got just a tiny bit on there. You won't need a lot. And now that wing's not going to go anywhere. That, just something to help get rid of that uh, s slipperiness of the squirrel. Like I can pull on that. Oof, just got some hairdo. All right. I'm going to tie that off now, and that head's going to end up getting too big. Darn it. But, uh, I mean, you're playing with number 12s here. That's going to happen. Not too shabby. All right, so I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of head cement. My bottle was cold and I turned heat on in this room and uh, the head cement is slowly expanding in the bottle. 
So if you ever have that problem, just open the container as it warms up and it'll just be air that escapes as it expands instead of liquid when you turn it over. So folks, that is a Harry Mary. Um, I do like this pattern a lot. I know it's very similar to a blue charm, but don't knock it until you've tried it. Um, that red squirrel on the wing really does make a difference. Thank you all very much for watching. I uh, appreciate you popping by. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. If not, totally cool too. Uh, until I see you next time, take care.